Hey everybody and welcome to Geeks and Drinks, I'm Jason. I'm Jordan. There's a lot to get through regarding from E3, we also have a review of Wonder Woman, but we do need to start on a bit of a somber note, uh, unfortunately. Um, the A lot of people consider their, their Batman. Uh, the best term I've heard is, you know, your dad's Batman. Your dad's Batman. Adam West, unfortunately, uh, passed away recently. Uh, he was uh, 88 years old after uh, a short battle with a leukemia, I believe. Yep. Um, there is a, actually a massive gathering going on at Los Angeles City Hall tonight, because uh, we're recording this on Thursday the 15th. Um, to um, honor his legacy, they're actually going to shine the bat signal on the uh, the city hall tower. It's a nice, nice bit there. There's already a bunch of people there. There's um, a bunch of people in different outfits, and of course, uh, a replica of the '69 Batmobile is there as well. And I think a lot of people are going to be there just to share pay his their memory, respects. pay their respects. I mean, we've enjoyed his his breadth of work for yeah. Well, his his Batman. Well, I've loved him in Batman and all of his other works. I know not so much some of his other, you like, know. Like what? Name one. Name two other things he's done that's not Family Guy. I enjoy his Family Guy. Or, sorry, Family Guy or being Batman. His little bits in Robot Chicken. Where he's Batman? <laughs> yes. Fair enough. I still enjoy it, though. No, and it's... it's. But he was always that type of person, though, like a lot of people, Near a lot of reports end. have stated that aren't you worried about just being pigeonholed as this type of actor? And he's like, no, never. Not anymore. No, yeah. bullshit. No, he was for the longest time. Yeah. But still. Things have done never. I mean, that was that was kind of a big deal for him. I mean, I told you, I, I when I found out the news, I watched the episode Beware the Grey Ghost. The yes. episode of Batman, Batman the Animated, animated Series, series yeah. where it was, that was Adam West's first big comeback to Batman because he hated the idea of the fact that he was going to be forever known as Batman. Mm. And when he came back and did that, and, like, the, the end scene where ba or Bruce Wayne's like, you know, he used to be my hero and as a child. I'm like, oh, fuck. Yeah. So there was a period of time where he was just like, I, I don't want to do this yeah. anymore. And but then he came back and he's like, no, this is who I am. He realized that it wasn't an embarrassment. It was something that he was people's hero for mm -hmm. years. That's true. Very, very true. So, unfortunately, yes, he has passed, but there's still... Plenty of work that you probably haven't watched all of yet, because I've never seen all of the 69 Batman series. There's still stuff out there sure. I haven't watched, so it, it's stuff work. I will follow that. Plus, we didn't see um, his the latest uh, animated movie that yeah, focused the 60s back one? in the 60s one. Yeah, we I don't I haven't watched that one yet. Have you? No. No, okay. Well, don't forget, apparently the, uh, I was reading an article that there was a second one. Te oh, really? Technically, that's his last movie. Really? Being the voice for 60s Batman again or something like that. Hmm. I mean, it was at work, so I had to like quickly scroll past the article, but apparently that's what I saw, that there's another 60s animated Batman movie. I guess we can look forward to that. Yeah. I mean, we had the uh, the pleasure of uh, briefly meeting him. Mm -hmm. uh, was well, that... I met him before. Oh, you have? At Comic-Con. Like, it was when I was passing, was like, fucking Adam West. Fuck. <laughs> Dude, it's Batman. <sighs> Don't say anything embarrassing like Batusi. And yet, you probably did. No, I didn't. Like, I, it's one of the few times I, I met a celebrity. I'm like, <laughs> just like no words. Like mm -hmm. Tim mentioned, I was speechless. But like with Adam West, at least I was like, <laughs> there were some audible <laughs> sounds coming out. Something. Yeah. I don't know if they were, you know, people would understand what you were saying, but you were trying to make an effort at the time. Like I said there were sounds. I didn't say words. <laughs> All right. Well, we will miss you, Adam West, and we will. Uh, Definitely be sharing on social media everything that's going on. I hope you're um, back to sing up in heaven. Yes. I'm drinking a glass of milk at the club. That's what he ordered, man. All right. Should we get to the yeah. uh, the movie review? Yeah. All right. So uh, Wonder Woman came out, and wasn't that? It was all right. I mean, no. Aside from the ending being uh, the fuck. Yeah. The final battle. Uh, but no, the movie was really well done. I enjoyed a lot of it. Mm -hmm. um, again, I did laugh when it's like, all right, let's give everyone the same act. Everyone on Themyscira, let's give her the, let's give them the same accent as Gal Gadot, just because because she can't she can't do a normal act like she can't mm -hmm. have a regular American or a British accent like she already has her Israeli. Yes, I'm, I'll, I'll say it's Israeli. Her, she already yeah. has the accent that she has, so it's like, how are we gonna get around this? We're just gonna give everyone the same accent. Mm-hmm. It's easier for everyone else to do that. Yeah. Than, yeah. It's easier to train actual um, actors. The action sequences, uh, 
we'll, we'll, let's focus on the first two acts. The action sequences were energetic. They were enjoyable. They were uh, well choreographed and shot. The dialogue wasn't half bad. Um, Even for CG pregnancy, the whole movie was fantastic. Yeah, that's true. They did have to cut this giant green cloth uh, triangle in the middle of her suit when they did reshoots. Um, but so the main characters are, are fairly fleshed out. There was a lot of side characters that it felt... Well, you didn't need them. Here's what I'm going to say. There was a lot of tones and and aspects in this film that I was watching and was like, I have seen this thing before. I'm thinking back to the original um, uh, so Captain America uh, movie. Oh, uh, and First the, Avenger. Yes, and the thing is, I, I was thinking back at him like, I've seen this before. They, they've ripped it off. And then I realized, no, they didn't rip it off. They're both going back in time. It is a world war they are dealing with, just different wars. But honestly, tonally, that's fine. It's I, still the same war. It's I, like World War Two. No, sorry, it's no, World War One. World War One for Wonder Woman. World War Two for Captain America. Eh. But here's the thing, though. I was fine with the similarities. I thoroughly enjoyed Captain America: The First Avenger. Um, really, I thought it was just okay. I really enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed going going back and seeing all the different characters and how they. They flushed him out. They flushed out his backstory a little bit more, which actually tied in more because I was watching um, Agent Carter, and of course, Agents of Shield had a mm. little bit tied as well. Never so watched it was, any of those. It was those. nice to what, see all that tie into it. Mm -hmm. um, but seeing some of those tones in Wonder Woman, I was like, okay, I'll I'll grant you that they did a well uh, a good job with that. So why say that you can't copy? That? My favorite review is still my buddy Keith, which was uh, my thought while watching Wonder Woman. I can't wait till Marvel does a much better job of this. Um, and then later he went on to say, uh, halfway through the movie, I realized I would have just—I wish I would have just seen a movie of Baby uh, Diana because that girl's adorable as shit. Yeah, the little kid actress they had playing her yeah. did a really good job. Um, and she didn't have the accent. No, no, she didn't. Um, but the thing, but things going back with that ton tonality, it worked well. But in um, Captain America, you had a bit more understanding of the character's backstory and why they were together and what they were doing together. This one, they were almost just thrown in there saying, hey, she needs her own band of, you know, rascalians to uh, yeah. you know, follow through. I'm like, we could have gone through this entire movie without them. It, it, it would not have made a difference whatsoever. I disagree. You disagree? Yeah. Why? Because you need the human element for something to attach to. But you, can't, really you, you, can't have, you can't have the uber hero and the uber superhero. Like, you okay. need, like, the plucky sidekick, and that's essentially what they were. They were just comic relief. But at the same time, though, they all, they tried to force humanity into those characters as very brief as we had a chance to yeah. see them and understand them. And I was... But you, need, you, need, you needed her to see the dark side of war and stuff like that. Think about the Scotsman who couldn't pull the trigger. Someone who has seen actual war and battle, who's the exact... I still could not... He is you know, the exact opposite of Wonder Woman. Because Wonder Woman, Diana, her whole thing was war is mm -hmm. exciting, war is amazing. But she'd never been in a war. Meanwhile, you have the other guy who's been around this shit for a while. Mm -hmm. And you see that he's fucked up mentally. Right. Like, he doesn't You get all like the this. PTSD yeah. going through with that. I, I get that, but the way it was portrayed to me was so one-dimensional. It was just literally just have, a, have him wear a shirt saying, I am the PTSD um, character. It wasn't that this. obvious. To me, it was. It was like, oh, I don't need you. You have one thing to do in this entire movie. Yeah, they could have fleshed you out just a little bit more. It's I'm, what you I'm get for not having a cocktail at dinner. Yeah, well, well, speaking of cocktails, we'll come back to the movie review in just a second. What are we drinking tonight? It's technically, I don't fucking know what it's called. Uh, it's basically like a Moscow Mule, yep. but with gin and some flavorings. Basically, uh, I use Hendrix gin just because it's that's my favorite gin. It works There's well with it. It's the vodka of gins. Like, there's not a, there's enough taste where you have something there, mm -hmm. but it's not enough. It's, yeah, it's my, it's fantastic. Well, because vodka's supposed to be flavorless, colorless, noderless, but a lot of times it ends up take, tasting like rubbing alcohol. Where gin, yeah. you know... It has some flavor you can impart or into. Or gin is usually, it's like, okay, we're going to kick you right in the testicles with a bunch of berries, like the, the spice from it. Right. 
Whereas Hendrix is nice. It's very muted, very mm -hmm. subtle. It's it's good. It's tasty. I do like this. I mean, I mean it's it's refreshing, especially for a hot day like yep, this. Yep, which is why I wanted to make um, it. It's not. There's not a bit of sugar or anything in it. No. So you won't get nasty hangovers from drinking it either all day. Yeah. It's literally. Like you can relax just in the shade yeah. with a nice book and drink this yeah. and you know, all day. It's Hendrix uh, Aldeflower liqueur, which is again as close as you get to an actual sweetener in there. Mm -hmm. uh, some mint, uh, some cucumber, and ginger beer, and like it's supposed to be a splash of lime. But I was a dumbass and forgot the lime. But you don't it's miss still, anything. It's still fine without the lime though. Mm -hmm. So you know, we'll have to think of a name for this though, and we'll also put in the the show notes actually how you can make this yourself. Man, that um, means I have to memorize a recipe. <laughs> or at least put pen to paper and figure it out. Something like that. I've made it so many times by now, I've just completely blanked on the, like, parts. Uh-huh. And it's just kind of become... Fuck it. Yeah. But at the same time, though, this is one of those things, that's just like I said, it's smooth, it's relaxing, it's... Delicious. Oh, and then top with ginger beer. Yes, must have the ginger beer. Well, because that's, that's the kind of the whole mule element part of it. Mm-hmm. But there's always... So many places are trying their own different kinds of... Mules out there, yeah. And fortunately, a lot of those mules are horrible. Garbage. Yeah, they're they're not. Just call it what it is, Jason. It's garbage. Garbage. Okay, I, I can't argue with that. Um, but yeah, no. Like I, the one thing I've, uh, Becca actually, she brought up the fact that I, I told her that I had been lacking in the drink department, mm. and she was like, "Yeah, when was the last time you made something?" I don't know, probably on geeks and drinks. I think the last time we actually did any kind of experimenting with drinks was. The Ecto Cooler thing from like over a year ago. Which I still have three cases for. I'll take most of my friends. I got enough <laughs> Hendrix to last me a while. Um, and then I'm like, well, what do I need? Mm -hmm. She's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I have no idea. Do I do I remaster a classic? Um, but you have all these different options, and they don't always have to be geek themed. It's always just a nice to have a, uh, a just a nice drink to have and enjoy. It doesn't always have to be beer. Besides. I'm sure everyone's like, well, it's called Geeks and Drinks. We should have some more, you know, drinks. Oh, I mean, we always do drink, but I mean, it's one of those things. We started out, and it's like we were we were making things. Mm -hmm. And by that, I mean you would find you or Jess would find cool recipes, and it's like, all right, let's let's see if I can MacGyver this together and make it work. Right. Um, I mean, you weren't around for no, because you had to work that day, uh, Star Wars Day two years ago, not this past year, but the year before. Uh huh. I had to work. Yes. Yeah. I made like six different drinks that day. Mm -hmm. I've never seen all the pictures of them, too. Mm -hmm. My okay. favorite is still the Mara Jade, which we did on a previous episode. Yes, we did. Uh, the one thing I forgot to do and still uh, intend to do eventually um, is I want to make a Darth Revan drink. I have an idea. I think it might have to be a, a nerdy take on the, uh, the Irish trash can. I'm down. Do you know what an Irish trash can is? No idea. Basically, you take all the parts that you would use for a adios. Oh, Jesus. Really? Which is vodka, gin, and rum. And then what you do is you double it. So if it's supposed to be like an ounce and a half, you do three ounces. Cool. And then once the glass is full, because it always is at that point, mm -hmm. you take a can of Red Bull, you open it, and then stab it on top. So it's kind of like a water cooler where you have like that <laughs> suction. So as you drink with a straw, it slowly starts dumping more Red Bull into it. I mean, I'm down. I'm Cons just like, considering that's just going to be... <laughs> That that was the only thing I could think of to match that man's pure power. That's just gonna be interesting. All right. Considering what there's already a Darth Vader, which is god awful. That's basically an adios, but you do like a shot of grenadine, or you do like a dash of grenadine and like a shot of Jaeger in the top. Yeah. But if I do the Irish trash can. Mm-hmm. All right. Maybe somehow try to incorporate the color purple for his lightsaber. Let's make this happen. Oh, I can get a Huckleberry set. So instead, would of, work, so instead yeah. of having to use the uh, like uh, blue curacao or Midori, any you could like just the use weird that. On yeah. that, just do a quick dash of that, stir that all up, because that because most of them come in a syrup anyway, so that would cover also cover the need to use any uh, sweet and sour, sweet and sour simple sauce. syrup. Yeah, just use all the booze. This is gonna be potent this and gonna awesome. It's gonna be awesome. amazing. Vodka, yes, look forward gin, to rum, that whiskey. <laughs> All right, but the reason we want to take a quick break, uh, <laughs> I go to the drink real quick, because now let's talk about the third and final act of Wonder Woman. Oh, Lupin was fucking terrible. I mean, um, <laughs> Ares. Yes. I'm uh, sorry. I, I mean, we've all, been, we've all seen that thing, or we all have that one thing where we know that one actor from something, and that's kind of forever what they're known for. Mm -hmm. 
I'm fucking terrible at it. It's why I know actors and shit as well as I do. Mm. It just Still to this day, you. Jason Alexander, you can go fuck yourself. Okay, my grandma made the mistake of letting me watch Pretty Woman at the age of like three. <laughs> I know what you did to Julia Roberts. I don't care if she has that creepy vein or not. How dare you, Stucky? How dare you? <laughs> so on that note, uh, Aries was super <laughs> creepy. Yeah, and as far as the, they're trying to turn around and say, oh, it's what the twist, he you. He has a. Uh... No, you know, we saw it coming from the beginning. Oh, yeah, completely from a mile away. The second he's like, no, no, I hear you. I'm the only one that understands you. I'm like, no. Yeah, I'm the only one that's going to understand you. I'm the only one that's going to bankroll you on your, your journey for salvation and saving the world. And So I felt bad so I'm like, no, that's no. too obvious. There's no way they can do that. And then apparently you and I were the only ones like, no, no this is what's happening. Oh. And this final battle... So I don't. Well, let's let's stop because this we don't have to spoil anything. I mean, I feel like we probably already have. Has that train left the station? The train has left the station. We're, we're, okay. This movie has been out for a couple weeks now. People have had their well, their it's shot. Two weeks tomorrow. But this movie won't. This video won't come out until Friday or Saturday. So we're good. If tomorrow. Yes. So it's by the time it reaches yeah. two weeks. All right. I guess that's fair. Go. I'm, but yeah, no, Lupin. I, it's it was very weird taking trying to take him seriously. Especially when it's, you know, let's try to buff him out and make him look like a god. And that was the hilarious part about it. It was he's a scrawny let, little, yeah, a scrawny little British yap. And he basically, in order to try to make him look more godlike, they didn't try to enhance his physique. No, they took no, 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 metal no. and no, no. shit. They, from... they did enhance his physique, but like neck and face were the same. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of like an uh, Iron Man one with Warmonger. Yeah, so it's like that's you see true. like a giant metal body and like this little. Jeff Bridges' head. It was essentially the same thing, but with a scrawnier British dude. <laughs> it just did not work. Not at all. He but was it, not intimidating at all. You could have put... He had all this, you know, potential. You could you can further enhance should, the character know, and whatnot. And then you hear this... Biggest mistake. They should have brought back Alfred Molina. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, though, Because right? he, at this point... They could have swapped it, got a full CG character, bring Alfred Molina in to voice the, the, the role itself. Well, yeah, because in the when in the heyday of D Marvel, or yeah, no, DC doing all their uh, like animated movies, when they're like, we're going to release the origin stories of all these people you don't fucking know, one of the ones they did was Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. One of Nathan Fillion's best voice acting jobs. Um, Carrie Russell? Fucking Felicity. She, it doesn't matter what the bitch does. She'll always be known as Felicity. <laughs> Shaved her head, lost half her audience, got her show canceled. Um, but then Alfred Molina was the voice of Ares. Yes. And it was fucking perfect. Yes, it was. It was completely... Like, that's one of those totally movies that correct. got voice acting, like, fucking down. Yes. And like, it, normally with their most... Like, I think you and I can both agree, even the best uh, animated movies or shows and stuff like that, there's always, like, one or two voice actors we were like... Yeah, like so with, there's always exceptions to the rule, and that movie was an exception. They've actually done yeah, phenomenal every, job. At everyone that. was fucking spot on. And at that point, like I said, you could have just turned around, wrapped all the art, new armor around the character, gone full CG, and brought it out for Melina to voice the, the, the Not role. Not even in, that. I would have been cool if just you know, scrawny British dude disappeared, and it was Alfred Molina. That would be awesome as well. But I think that would be a little more, a little too. Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Him did it. Yeah, but that's think, all... Think about, uh, the fuck's his name? But Call that's also him. Johnny Depp, though. That's fine. Yeah. You, you're telling me Alfred Molina wouldn't be, like, the better, like, at the end switch? Oh, I'm not doubting that in the least. He would be the, the but better But that would be awesome, like, if it's like, oh, skinny, skinny British dude, what are you doing here? Mm -hmm. And then he fucking switches over to Alfred Molina, and she's like, oh, fuck, it's Ares. Do you think like, would... that face she would recognize. Do you think it would be... Well, the only way that would work at that point is that you would actually have to go back further in the movie... And actually show a scene with Alfred Molina's no, face don't. on there. No, you don't. So she can recognize that. Not if she's heard the story. We, we, we barely knew. We got that weird... I'm sorry. When they were explaining like the fight between Zeus and Ares and all the gods and how Themyscira came to be... Right. That looked like a fucking video game intro. It really like, it was. Looked it looked like no, they weren't it even seriously trying. was. But you don't have to show that. Were you expecting more like a, a more fleshed out backstory? No, no, no. Or? I was fine with that. But I, because that's what we got... Mm -hmm. That's what we were shown. Right. So it would make sense if Diana, when she saw Skinny British Dude, 
fuck, um, Professor Lupin. When she saw Professor yeah. Lupin, she would have been like, oh, yeah, you're, I guess you want to help us. Let's do this. Mm-hmm. But then when he switches to Ares, she might be able to switch and be like, I, you're fucking Ares. Do you think that'd be too jarring for the general audience to keep to, to keep up with? No. At that point, you know? Okay. Have him switch over in the third act. Have it be that's why she didn't know. You're telling me there was no way for him to, like, there was, there was no physical cues of any kind to let you know that he was Ares. No, Other I'm, than the whole thing of, like, I'm your I best want, friend. Yeah. I want to help you. How can I help? Yeah. Um... No, you're right. I'm just thinking the, more on the lines of general audience expectations for movies and whatnot. If you're going to have a what-to-twist scene like that at the end, more often than not, you have to have at least a single scene earlier on with that final character's uh Fantastic face. Beast did it. But at the same time, though, why didn't they do that with, um, with Wonder Woman? Zack Snyder was an executive producer. Fair enough. I can't, I can't argue against that one. <laughs> God damn it. I'm sorry about your daughter. <laughs> Oh, I hate to laugh, oh, you but make God shit damn it. movies. <laughs> save us, Joss Whedon. Um, <laughs> save us, Joss Whedon. You're Whedon, only hope. Whedon we trust. Yes. I bought you drinks. <laughs> That's all I want. Just save, save the franchise. <sighs> okay. All right. I but, bought you your weird bellinis. That's true, yeah. Whatever the fuck they were, they look like bellinis. Whatever. Something like that. Anyways. Sandy Hoozle. Uh, so, yeah, overall, Wonder Woman, a uh, lot better than expected. Um, yeah. Is it the, the best DC movie yet? Best thing I can say about the movie... Actually, I'll start. Worst thing I have to say yeah, about the movie... Okay. Fucking third act. Third act was garbage. Yes, it was. Okay. Best thing I can say about the movie... It had that god-awful what turned out to be the Wonder Woman theme song. Like, that was in there, like, twice. Like, it was, it was more in Batman versus Superman... It was. ...than it was in Wonder Woman. Because I was dreading seeing Wonder Woman just because I didn't want, like, every 20 minutes... Dun, 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 dun. No, it's even, although, even when they try to have like, we're gonna show you a music video of some like slutty Asian chick showing you that she's playing it on the cello. No, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Remember, I did find a worse version of that though. No, the Wonder Dom, Woman thing. Dom found it first. Dom posted it on Facebook. Oh, before he, you sent it to with me with the bagpipes. Yes. Oh God, that was oh. I thought the movie, the theme was worse. Like, if enough. you're gonna like tweak something with like a classical instrument, do it right. Um, th- I can't remember her name, but you know exactly who I'm talking about. Uh, she's the uh, she's also like redheaded, so it's not like yeah. That? Lindsay Sterling. Lindsay Sterling. There you it's go. It's not my fault that she's redhead, but she's absolutely <laughs> gorgeous, and she plays like, amazing songs with just her fucking violin, mm-hmm. and they're fantastic. Yes, yeah, she definitely honed her craft, and it's definitely enjoyable. That was. Mm. But I mean, like, but the source I, material itself is I, not good. I would good. have felt better if, like, Lindsay Sterling. Let's just bring it in. Bring it in. Like, can you do Wonder Woman? I'm just. At this point, we can blame. I think it's it's Junkie XL who is the, who created that thing, or that that variation of the thing. So I could anyways, be wrong on that. Anyways, we let's, do let's have Jaws Whedon making Justice League. Yay! And even better, today it was announced that Danny Motherfucking Elfman is doing the soundtrack to it. Us. Fucking Jack Skellington, singing voice. <laughs> Is doing it, uh, so yay yeah. Justice League. I think we'll, ha- we'll he'll have a lot more fun with this than his uh, Fifty most, Shades. Yeah, than his Fifty Shades uh, soundtrack. <laughs> well, I just feel bad. It's uh, DC is it's like a child learning to walk, mm-hmm. stumbling multiple times. While it's taking older, headers br- into the coffee table. While its while older it's brother older is like brother sprinting and doing Olympics. And- it's fucking doing wheelies <laughs> in the parking lot, just doing donuts. <laughs> Flipping the double deuces <laughs> while still doing donuts in the parking lot, um, but even then, I feel like we're we're start we're slowly starting to get over that. Slowly but surely. I mean, I haven't seen Guardians two, which was the last one, but we'll still we'll still it, see whatever. That it's on yeah. my to do list. Yes. But E three, let's get in it. Okay. So much stuff to talk about. We're gonna try to uh, rush through as much as possible. There is absolutely no way we are going to get every single major event uh, event covered right here. Um, you guys probably covered most of it yourself when watching it, either live or reading on the multiple websites yeah, on the you internet. Yeah, probably side. got news the same way I yeah. did, uh, with the exception of like thirty minutes ago. Um, for the simple fact that, like, I had Facebook and my friend Megan who would just post shit mm-hmm. online. Like, I even told her she goes, "Get rid. I'm sorry. I'm going to post a lot of E3 stuff, sweetheart. That's fine. Your tastes aren't garbage. Like, I look forward to this because I know whatever you post, I'm not going to sit there and be like, oh, this." Mm-hmm. Oh, you're talking about the new uh, Call of Duty. Um, 
Oh yeah, yeah. funny how it looks exactly uh, like the old Call of Duty. Any of those Call of Duty Battlefield things, we're not talking about it. It's because they're all the goddamn same thing year Guess after what? year. Guess what? We're not going to talk about Grey Brown Shooters. There you go. Because, uh, you know, what? we'll do it right now. Uh, they're, re- uh, they're releasing a new uh, shooter game. Uh, it takes place in World War II. I think they've gotten over the... Uh, the future stuff, because they can only do that so much. So many times, The yeah. imagination's really only so far with them. It's kind of like when you were a kid and you had that super sweet, like, 64 box of crayons. Yeah. You know, you only play with brick red or macaroni and cheese color for so long before you go back to the classics. Because yes. that's what works. That's yeah. essentially Call of Duty. Having a giant crayon box and sticking with the same six shit colors because you don't know what to do. Brown, dark brown, dark grass brown. And there's a brown that's kind of a grayish color. Ooh, Ooh. something's getting risky. Um, so anyways, uh, Jason made me watch the... Well, he didn't make me. He put on the trailer prior to filming for Beyond Good and Evil 2. Um, no idea what the fuck I watched, I'm, but I'm in. I'm so happy for Again, this. I'm I can so- only assume the gorilla from Sing, uh, apparently his <laughs> career did not take off, so he did have to resort back to his life of crime. <laughs> And he and just like, and he stole the hook hand from that one game. And he's no longer in a G Bio movie, Commando. so he can just curse everything he wants. Bi- was it Bionic Commando? Bionic Commando. Bionic Commando, and he just stole his arm, because basically, when you're a gorilla, you have the strength of you know two men. Mm. Uh, I have been waiting for this announcement for like 15 years. But see, years. I had no idea. I didn't even know there was a Beyond Good and Evil one. Okay, Beyond Good and Evil one. You, nothing to do with what I saw. No, absolutely nothing to do with what happened. Um. Beyond Good and Evil 1 came out, I want to say, in 2003. It came out on PlayStation 2 and GameCube. Yeah, I say 2003. That's that's early PlayStation 2. Yeah, and early. And like GameCube after it's been out for like a year. Yeah, no, this came out and flew under the radar because people saw this like almost cartoony uh, animation style and was like, oh, this is just a kid's game. We're not going to Like take GTA any notice. was finally just becoming a 3D game, not that overhead <laughs> oh, thing. That is- God, I remember and so, that. Just because I remember it's like, let's roll up to the hotel. Why? Just get real close to the hotel and turn the volume all the way up. Why? Like, I thought the whole point of this game was just to run over hookers and, like, try to avoid hitting cops. <laughs> no, man, you don't understand. Fine. <sighs> this is the greatest game ever. <laughs> oh, this is, this is, oh, this comes only second to Naked Samus in Smash Bros. 1. <laughs> the timing. It's all about the timing, Jason. <laughs> oh. Have some hot coffee with it. That came later. Yes, it did. That Wait, no, later. hot coffee. That was three. No, it was no, four. No, it was San, not. San Andreas? There you go. Okay. It was San Andreas, but that came later when PC first started to become a viable option. That's true. Because that's when it finally became unlocked. Because someone looked into that and like, went through the code and found that. But mm-hmm. anyways, we're digressing. So, yes, Beyond Good and Evil 1 came out in 2003 for PS2 and in GameCube. It had very cartoonish graphics, but my god, the... Um, the fighting mechanics were spot on. It actually had a really good story, fantastic voice acting. Well, see, I'm both worried and excited uh, because I feel like the video game industry is starting to realize their mistakes. Um, and I hate to... I, I don't, I, I don't want to speak too prematurely. Like, I don't want to jinx it. Okay. But I'm wondering if we're hitting a Silver Age. It's, we had our golden age with the yeah. 16-bit era, and we've had some some slow rises. Yeah, but we're getting to that point now where it's like, cool, indie games have finally not—they're not taken as a fucking joke anymore. Right. Um, these old franchises, not mm-hmm. even franchises, games that were so good but were never given the chance to become a franchise. True. You're beyond good and evil. Mm-hmm. Uh, they also announced that they're H- HD mastering fucking Shadow of the Colossus. It's not a remaster. It's actually a remake. They're rebuilding it from but the ground up. But you know what up. I mean, yeah. though. Like, mm-hmm. it's... Which it's, we're, we're going to get to that the, in It's still the same game, but yeah. it's... That's why I use the term remastering. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, there's... I mean, there's other games out there. We'll, we'll touch on them later. But it sounds like they're like, we're learning from our mistakes. We need to do something. We need to actually listen to the fans. Because we can't write. Because the golden age, that's where we had all these original IPs that fucking lasted us forever. Because mm-hmm. I'll even say the 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 golden age ended with PS One. I I agree with that. Yeah. Like that was when we had our birth, but we had an age where uh, home gaming was in its prime. Yes. Everybody was. Every game Everyone that was coming had a out console. Was... Every game that came out was amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, well, let me rephrase. Nine out of ten games were amazing. Yes. But even like the shit games, 
like or games that are not remembered. There was something pushing there's, the envelope. There was something we have never no, seen I, before. No, at not that so point. much that. There, for those weird games that most people don't remember, mm -hmm. there's always that core group of people that are like, "No, I, I played Clay Fighter. You didn't play it for Super Nintendo." That shit was my jam. Wasn't that called like 63 and a third or something that like that? That was when it came out for 64. The right. original that came out for Super Nintendo. That's Clay right. Fighter. Just Clay Fighter, that's right. Then for uh, 64, they came, out, they came out with Clay Fighter 63 and a half. Third. Or a third. Yep. And then on top of that, Blockbuster had their own copy of the game, mm -hmm. which is called Clay Fighter 63 and a third Sculptor's Cut. Yes. And that was the one I believe that actually had Booger Man, which is a should be forgotten for obvious reasons. <laughs> it's it's like Toe Jam and Earl. Fucking it's it's dead. Fucking get over it. And it had Earthworm Jim, who needs a fucking comeback. He does need to come back. Yes. Ah, uh, EWJ. Jam and I had your fucking toys and everything. I didn't even <laughs> I didn't even play your games back then. But I remember the cartoon on WB, Kids WB to be more exact. You were like the last thing to be aired. <laughs> well, Wayne had was the last thing to be aired, but. That was a hard sell. It was Damon Wayans as, like, a Bobby's World character. Yeah. But I watched Earthworm Jim. Never played any of the games. Really? I didn't play any of the games. They were a fun platformer. I did not play any of them until it came out for Game Boy Advance as when they were trying to do their, like, we're trying to bring it back. Oh, man. But I had the toys. I had Psycro. I had two different <laughs> versions of Earthworm Jim. I had that weird so it, cat it, thing with a fish in a bowl. So if they came around like Earthworm Jim's coming back, is it like a... You know. It would be like if they were to say the same thing for Mega Man. Yeah. I'd have half a chub and say, Jason, we're going to wherever I can... No, I still wouldn't pre-order a game. No. But I would go pick it up eventually. <laughs> no one pre-orders which, games anymore. Which or you on a, shouldn't. On a side note, um, Kenji Inofune's uh, company, Concept, which created their um, spiritual successor to, to, uh, to Mega Man, which was Mighty Number no. 9, which was... Oh, that dog God shit. awful. I paid full price for that goddamn you did. game. I'm so disappointed in myself. But at the same time, I have no problem admitting that the reason why that happened was because me, I knew you were probably just like, you were excited for the game, but you were like, cool, Jordan and I can play this. Like, exactly. I know he's super excited to play Mega Man. Like, Meg, he won't shut the fuck up about Mega Man. I have yet to get past through the first level. <laughs> I More can't, specifically, can't that. that game does choose the Mega Man way of doing things, where you can pick any level you want. Yes. So by saying we've not gotten past the first level, that means we've played two, maybe three out of, like, the six levels available, but didn't give a shit and go back. Yeah. That, that's just, that tells you how, how you. good quality that game was. But anyways, while I'm bringing them up, they were actually uh, bought out by another company that actually makes Nino Kuni, um, the game that was came out on the, the PS4. What the fuck is a Nino Kuni? Nino Kuni is a fantastic game that was actually created in co cooperation with Studio Ghibli. Oh, the RPG that came out. A Are sequel they... came out, and that company bought Comcept. So yeah, that company, Level 5, bought out Comcept, and now they are now known as Level 5 Comcept. And, uh... Well, they, at least they merged the two names, so that was mighty polite of them. But um, No, I mean, they could have easily been like foot down well essentially they the are same. now ba they have now basically become level fives um osaka based studio their second development team again that's yeah. cool and that's perfectly fine like you know what i mean like it wasn't that, like the dick going embrace me mm -hmm. i am your god now right it's like let's work together and make something let's make gaming great again mm -hmm. without building a wall or being a carrot but let's throw us all the way back to what we were talking about initially which was um beyond good and evil 2 uh, the well, sequel. I forgot that's what we were talking about. <laughs> Jesus. And it's upon tangents. But anyways, yeah, the sequel, um, the trailer that came out um, showcases that this takes place as a prequel before the birth of the main character from the first Beyond Good and Evil game, Jade. So this is going to be um, a pirate-based economy, a lot of you know trading back and stealing back and forth. Uh, Michel An Ansel uh, was actually on stage teary eye because he finally is able to announce this. He's been working on this for so long. Um, but the big thing they've been working on for this one, and they showcase this, not in public, but to behind, this, behind closed doors to the press, was a new graphic system that allowed them to literally you're inside this room of this building. You walk outside. You get in a car. You can drive around. Oh, that car is also a spaceship. You jump up. You, you start flying around. You see the city. And next thing you know, you fly all the way to space. There's no lag in between any of that. Damn. That is ambitious That's as impressive. All hell. So we'll see how this all works out. With them just making I was about this, to say, we'll see. You know, in like five years. We've been lied to before. 
So Andromeda. We'll, we'll see what happens with this. I mean, all they actually said was, um, we want you by our side at the early stages of development and thought and throughout production to take part in our adventure. I.e., we're not even in pre-alpha stage here. Get in for it. Buckle in for a long ride. We spent the last four months making this trailer just to see if you guys would be into it. And the place because, erupted because when we, they did. we made we made that gamble in hopes <laughs> that you guys would be into it and we can get more money. Yeah. Uh, some other things happened uh, from Microsoft. They finally made the official announcement of the Xbox One X, previously known as Project Scorpio. Um, the specs are very impressive. Uh, they actually released that information out very early, about a month ago, actually. Uh, only things we really found out today was a couple things. One, their um, the official name, Xbox One X. It's coming out this November, and the price tag on it is five hundred dollars for a console. Can't wait to not get that. <laughs> yes, it is by far more powerful than either the Xbox One S, obviously, or the PS4 the Pro. The only cool thing they announced is when they showed what it would look like with the new Dragon Ball Z game. So yes, with that Dragon Ball uh, Z game, it was actually from Arc System Works, um, which created the Guilty Gear series, the latest versions of it. Were the Is that why it looks same pretty and like three, that weird cell shading? Because they're 3D characters uh, to act like they're in a 2D environment, which is yeah, why yeah, it yeah. has that style. Yeah, that's why it works so the well. The second you said Guilty Gear, like it just fucking clicked. Mm. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Um, but yeah, a lot of people are looking at the Xbox One X as it's very pretty and it's going to have a very small uh, amount of people who will buy it, and Microsoft seems to be okay with that. Um, well, I mean, as, it's long, impressive. as long as they don't make a shit ton of them. Like, if they're like, yeah, we're going to make millions of devices. Yeah, no. Because we're going to sell all of them. Their main console seller going forward is going to be the Xbox One S. Uh, because that's the one in direct competition with the PS4 Pro. This one's basically more for the elite gamer, if you want to call it I'm that. I'm sorry, so wait, they compl they completed a 2.5 before the 5 comes out? Or the point five? Yes. Go fuck yourself, Microsoft. Yeah, this is a whole new thing now, because most I consoles... I thought this was the point five. No, no. The point five, which is basically that the, the console refresh... Because we discussed this last year. Yes, is the, um, the, the Xbox One S and the PS4. Yeah. And essentially the PS4 Pro. But then Microsoft came out and said, yeah, that the Slim, the S version of it. No, no, no. That's just an updated re refresh version. This one we're building is much more powerful. And honestly, this could probably be our next, you know, console generation. But you know what? No. It's actually going to be the most premium way to showcase these games without it being the next console. No, oh fuck yeah, them for no. That. This is the, for the first we're starting to see this in a console uh, lifespan of a seven to ten years. Now we have a third iteration of it uh, showing up in there. Still five hundred dollars for it after the original Xbox One came out. How many years ago? Yeah, no. This is ridiculous. Like a lot of reviewers were saying that this is uh, impressive, but is by no means essential to play these games. Good. Ninety nine percent of everything that the Xbox One X can do, you can buy the S for half the price, if not less, and still get everything. You're good. Wait, the X is the one that they just announced. The S is the one that's not out yet. No, the S is this white one right here. This is the first refresh model of it. Um, that's been out for a while. It came out for two hundred ninety nine dollars. So wait, there's the one, the S, and then the X is what just came out. The X just came out. Yeah, I know. They're this is dumb. But why? Money. Oh, that's fucking. That's dumb. Money and bragging rights. Because, yes, the Xbox One X is way more powerful than the PS4 Pro. But the problem is, though, game selection-wise, I'll still pick up a PS4 Pro over an Xbox One X. Oh, you know, at work right now, the whole big argument, there's one guy that has an Xbox. He goes, yeah, you guys need to get an Xbox. No, the rest of us, were smart. We have a PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, you can go fuck yourself. Now, there are fun games on the Xbox, yes. But in terms of the amount of games that I want to play on either console... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the PS4, the PS4 has all Are of those games. Me? I mean, we're gonna get to it in a second, but given the choice, I mean, don't be wrong. I love my PlayStation. I'd trade that shit in for a Switch right now. Yeah, I mean, I have an Xbox One. I have a PS4. They kind of sit there because I play the Switch all the goddamn day. <laughs> uh, and we'll get to some of their their games in just a quick moment. But yes, the Xbox One X came out. It's available later on this year. It'd be available for five hundred dollars. Some of the games that were uh, announced uh, was from Bioware, their latest um, game called Anthem. Uh, looks very Destiny-like, where you basically pirate, pilot 
um, suits called javelins as you go out there and try to go into an inhospitable world and commit, you know... So Iron Man suits. Yeah, basically. So I'm looking at this and it just looks like Iron Man. And the thing is, you look at all this and the graphics and what the gameplay they're trying to go for... Like and that one's like, alright, you have your Hulkbuster, you have your regular Iron Man, mm -hmm. you have the space model, you have the undersea model. Yeah, you can do all of that. But it's funny, they put all this time and effort into this trailer for this and for this upcoming game, and what the hell happened with Mass Effect Andromeda? It just took a total nosedive. But that's for another episode to talk about. Uh. Um, get to some Nintendo news. They announced not one, but two Metroid games. First one being Metroid Prime 4, coming out for the Nintendo Switch. No, not announced, they mentioned. They announced. When the trailer's just a burning number Metroid four. Metroid Prime 4. It was four first. Like, for all we know, it could have been a shit version of, like, a teaser trailer for a new Fantastic Four movie. <laughs> we couldn't do it in movies. Might as well do it in video games. Because, unfortunately, all the, the the sexy cosplayers I follow, they all lost their shit when this came out. So I'm like, cool, well, I'll go check out, like, I'll see what this trailer's all about. Nothing. There's no, it's just a blue four that's on fire. Just saying now in development. I'm like, so three to five years down the pipe. Damn. Well, it's Nintendo. They'll get it out in a year, maybe two tops. Yeah, that's true. I'm still drastically, definitely looking forward to this. I kind of fanboyed out when uh, they made this announcement. Uh, Jess could attest to this because I started uh, texting her as few of my no, other friends No, she as made well. fun of you when we when I mentioned it earlier. Mm -hmm. Don't care. I'm still hyped about this. Uh, the other Metroid game that they was announced called uh, Metroid Samus Returns, which is going to be out only on the Nintendo 3DS. Are we going to learn more about the baby? Uh, I doubt it. I highly doubt it. But the baby, Jason. I know. I know. We're, we're not going to talk, talk about the baby today. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they finally re they released more information later. regarding uh, Super Mario Odyssey, which is basically Mario has turned into a body snatcher kind of being that he has this magical hat now with its own you know, eyes and everything, but he can now use that as his hat as a weapon, throws it around, he can jump on it if he needs to, but then he can throw the hat at other enemies and then take over their bodies. Yeah, like the T-Rex one, I'm like, oh, okay, that's really cool. And then when it shows, it's like, I'm going to take over a Goomba. I'm going to take over this dude standing next to me. Yeah. Why? Yeah. yeah. What is the point of that? Yeah, so Mario's consciousness, all, consciousness turns into his hat and his mustache on anything. It could be a tank, a T-Rex, a human being, which basically proves he's, no long, he's not a human. A Mexican um, stereotype of himself. Yeah. I mean, it looks fun. But the idea behind it, it was just like, um, it's kind of out there. I but mean, we all thought the same thing about Mario Sunshine, and that game is still super fun. Still love it. Still love it so, to this day. I, I mean, I'll wait till see what happens when it comes out. Which, God damn it, Reggie Fees and me, when asked numerous times over this, uh, this week about um, the virtual console, bringing GameCube games, any virtual console games, to the, the, the Nintendo Switch... You will not say a goddamn thing about it. Oh, we're, we've never said anything about the virtual console. We're working on a new idea for our, our online components. Give me the goddamn virtual console. That's all I gotta say. Wasn't wasn't it rumored they were gonna release like a Netflix kind of a thing deal? That's what's starting to what when they came out with an announcement about a, a week ago about the details of their online play. It's gonna be twenty bucks a year. Um, the chat, the lobby, and everything is taking place on your phone. There will be adapters you can buy to connect your Switch to your phone to headphones, which is going to be a giant mess of cables. Okay. Um, and that when you pay for it and you have their online system, you they announced uh, three titles, um, old uh, Super NES games, with additional network capabilities, basically online multiplayer, um, with more information coming down the road when they're ready. Well, I mean, you're probably hyped. I mean, they did announce, what, Splatoon 2? I was very happy for Spl Splatoon 2. I was happy for ARMS. I was... Um, I know it's coming out in like two weeks. It actually looks like a fun boxing game. They did a tournament of all of all things. Well, they announced that when they did their um, when they had their own E3. When they had their own, own presentation yeah, whatever, a while back. Whatever yeah. the Nintendo E3 is. They did. Um, but it's because it's finally coming out. They decided to showcase it. Brought a bunch of people in and actually had them host a tournament, which was it showcased the mechanics. People got a little more comfortable and got more hyped for it. And then the winner of the tournament had an exhibition mask uh, match with the uh, game's creator. Who thoroughly wiped the floor with him? Well, 
Wait, yeah. the newcomer or the... No, the, the, the owner just wiped the floor with him. Yeah, you would expect that. It was. spent time with it. It was just so funny. Though, like, this guy's all hyped. I'm like, yeah, I know this game. I could take this on. This would be awesome. What the shit just happened? Some yeah. secret tech. He knew some Konami, co- Konami code bullshit. Yeah. So. Um... What else was there from Nintendo real quick? Uh, do, 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 well, do, do, Nintendo, do. I think that was pretty much it. Oh, they had a new Yoshi game that looks very Paper Mario-ish. looks a lot of fun. They announced a new Kirby game and like a half dozen other games that are in development. Yeah. So, they d- oh, and of course the big one that everybody's talking about, Mario X Rabbids. You have no idea about this. You have, you have no gauge on this game, do no, you? No, I couldn't care less. Really? Okay. I'm actually hyped for this game. I've enjoyed Ubisoft's Rabbit because games. Because I, I didn't enjoy the Rabbit games. You didn't enjoy them? Okay. I thoroughly enjoyed them when they first came out, the, you know, the Rayman to game, me, Raven was, Rabbids. Yeah. I say, to me, it was the Minions before they were the Minions. Well, yeah, the, the first Rabbit game came out, I think, like, three years before First Despicable Me with the Minions. Yeah. But they were fun, and this game, when the uh, artwork first came out, everybody thought, oh, this is a joke, there's no way this is going to happen. No, this is actually happening. Miyamoto himself showed up to the Ubisoft uh, press conference. They started with that. Um, And it is a real-time strategy game, like XCOM. I'm happy for it. I I look forward to it. I'm probably spend a boatload of time on it. I mean, I I, I will see how it goes. It just was not what I was expecting. Yeah, it was very much... uh, Yeah. I did not see that one coming. Yeah. Uh, let's go through some other games real quick. Um, Shadow of War, the um, the follow up to uh, still never beat the first one. You never beat the first one. Oh, I have it. The the Lord of the Rings uh, what was it Shadows, Shadows of Mordor? Mordor? Yeah, I own it. You said it was fun though, was I it not? Played for about twenty minutes. So not that fun. Have you ever played Batman? W- which Batman? Take the worst parts of Batman, Arkham. Oh really? And take the most annoying parts of uh, Assassin's Creed. Oh. Barbie smash those together. Like, you know when you see, like, a little girl playing with, like, a Barbie in can, they're like, now kiss, and they're just smashing, smashing them together. Smashing together? That, with those two franchises. So we can't expect much from the sequel. I mean, those who love Lord of the Rings love it. Yeah. I, who don't, did not give a shit. Yeah. Like, I, don't, I was so bad because I loved Hobbit. Mm-hmm. Fucking hated the movies, for obvious reasons. <laughs> Actually, my friends <sighs> hated them. Yeah, no movies. I saw both. Because one year for the X, I bought her one and two. Actually, I bought her one, two, and three, the extended cuts. Mm-hmm. And we watched one and two back to back. Oh, jeez. That's but like we never got six around and a half hours. But we never got around to three just because she had to go take care of the, the friend. Ah, uh, yes. Um, over the holidays. But whatever. So I saw one and two because of her. And then Lord of the Rings, I've read the books, Mm -hmm. thought they were just really okay, didn't care for them, because it was a lot of, we're going to do an entire chapter about walking. Mm -hmm. Cool. (laughs) Uh, And then, uh, Jess can attest to this, her and I watched all of the Lord of the Rings movies, extended cut and otherwise, back to back, in every kind of weird variation or form. Right. And it was fucking terrible. Um, But those that I know who have done that, and they enjoyed every moment of it, they loved it. Uh, my friend Megan, who I mentioned earlier, uh, super into video games and stuff like that. Uh, she was fucking all in. She's like, they're making a sequel. Um, I was kind of disappointed. She was like, I'm going to talk about E3 for the next few days. And she posted about Shadows of Mordor and then Horizons DLC. I'm like, you know, there was more than that. Lots more than that. Cool. Okay. Uh, other things going on, a lot of people were very hyped for this one. Um, Monster Hunter is, has been a multiplayer co-op game. It's been uh, mostly on handhelds up until now. It's finally coming to consoles with Monster Hunter World. It's going to come out uh, Excuse me, for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Uh, I do not believe it's going to come out for the Switch. It's basically four guys in you know beefed up RPG outfits and... Uh, Taking out giant monsters. From How much dragons. do you hate free time? If the answer is a lot, a, enough, then yeah, play Monster Hunter. Yeah. How do you feel about grinding the same fucking thing over and over and over and over and over? You'll again? enjoy Monster Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. So, you guys can go enjoy that when that comes out. I'll give it a shot if there's a demo out for it. Um, Sony spent a lot of time at their uh, press conference talking about their upcoming Spider-Man a game. A lot of time. 
It was like a good like eight minute video. I would say the majority of their time. Yeah. Like they, I mean, everyone. There's the expression, "Don't put all your eggs in one basket." But no, they're putting all their eggs on this Spider-Man game. Insomniac has been working on this for a long time, and um, it looks pretty. Um, very quick time esque. <laughs> A lot of quick time events. I mean, events. not as bad as the recent Spider-Man game that we saw at Dave & Buster's. <laughs> yeah, that, that was that like little mobile Which phone was, game. Yeah, I mean, I hate the fact that arcade games have basically, or at least American arcade games, have become giant quick time event cabinets. Meanwhile, yeah. Japanese arcade games have become, how can we make these super elaborate peripherals more elaborate and super? Dude, um... That gun, that, remember that gun one that we tried? Yeah, the dual guns that could merge together like four different yeah. ways and whatnot. Yeah. That showed up in an article of like the ten coolest Japanese arcade games. We're like, yeah, hey, I tried playing that with Jason. We couldn't get out of the tutorial because it wouldn't let us. <laughs> yeah. We couldn't understand what was going on. Because well, it was all in Japanese first off, which didn't fucking help. But no, after I were like, not. no, gun's back. Let's no. go play Mario Kart. I'll play as the fucking Tanuki drummer. Which is funny the fuck it's you, you bring that up because um, it wasn't at E3, but Konami made the announcement that for their arcades in Japan, they announced a couple new ar uh, VR arcade games, including a VR multiplayer Mario Kart. And the trailer actually looks That'd be a lot of fun. And it would probably ruin a lot of friendships. <laughs> it's called Rainbow Road and Blue Shell, son. That's pretty much what it's going to be. So, but anyways, yeah, Spider-Man, it looks nice. Um, they did confirm later on that, yeah, there's a lot of quick-time events into it. There's a lot of cinematic aspects to it. And, oh, yeah, you can't kill anybody in this mo in this game, no matter how hard you try. You know what? I actually saw that in the trailer. Like, that was something that I actually noticed. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was kind of cool. There's always so, gonna I mean, the hero wouldn't allow that in the first place anyways. Exactly. They created a whole bunch of extra animations um, that'll take place automatically. Um... If someone's about to fall off a building or whatnot, he's always going to be able to, you know, shoot a, a, a web at him. Back. Yeah. Exactly. So there'll be still stuff for that. Uh, it was a nice little teaser at the end for their version of uh, Miles Morales to show up in this universe. So no idea how that's going to turn out. It could be just a... Um, I just, I really don't like the white that they incorporated with Spider-Man. The giant logo that takes place over, like, his, On chest, his chest and, and back. back. Yeah. And, like, the weird Batman, like... Knuckles. I'm not a fan of the knuckles. That that, that part, they kind of went a little too far for Look, me. It looks like taste. it has fingernails. Yes. Look at that photo right there. Yes. It's it's not not good. But it could be fun. We'll see what happens. There'll most obviously be a demo for this on the PS4. And it's, that'll be the true test to whether or not this will actually be worth picking up. The game looks fun, and it's probably amazing. But I can't get over the way he looks. Like, if they tell me pre-order the game and you can get, like, the original Spider-Man costume... Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll play that. I'll play that game fucking forwards and backwards. But true, sad part true. is that's what's going to be the main drive. Mm -hmm. Um, one other stuff to talk about real quick. Uh, Microsoft, uh, My Microsoft announced for Minecraft, which they own wholly. Um, I forgot they bought a that. A full cross-platform play for Minecraft. So if you have it on your mobile devices, your Nintendo Switch, your Xbox One, your PC, and a couple other things, um you can actually have it on the same server. And so if I'm working on this idea for my on my Switch, and then I come home and I want to play on my computer that exact same uh, yeah. world, you can do so. That's actually really cool. This cross-platform play is actually really taken off. Sony's like, no, we don't need to be a part of that. And they gave some janky, you know, worth, worthless uh, response or reason why. Like, their, their stuff is selling too well, and they don't need to... Uh, it lose their exclusivity for their yeah. own versions and blah blah blah. At this uh, point, they're just gonna lose lose money on that. Um, there's new Zero Dawn. Uh, I I still need to get that game eventually. I really do want to get that game. I can't, I, I turned. I've come around on that. When it first came out, I was just like, eh, I I why this doesn't make sense to me. And Zero Zero Dawn. Horizon Zero Dawn. Remember at the beginning, I was just like, I thought we agreed the fact that game looked amazing. I know it, I was definitely it looked, on that boat. It looked amazing. But I was always like, the story just like, wait, so they're reverted back to caveman style, but the uh, beasts are techno te technology, and uh, I, I could never get wrap my brain around the premise okay. of it. Now that I've seen more people play it through, I'm kind of like, okay, I can probably enjoy this. I, I will eventually play it. 
So okay. the fact that it's getting DLC, getting an expansion, I'm looking forward yeah, to that. Yeah, and it's, you know, DLC in the sense that, like, oh, at least the way they made it seem was kind of like World of Warcraft, here's your expansion. Yes. It's not DLC where it's like, oh, you get a new skin and maybe... No, like, here's this whole new area here's and a whole, story. Yeah, on. here's like an extra third of the game. Yeah. So that I thought was super awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, Crackdown 3, uh, they finally showcased a trailer for it. It was more so of a hype video uh, starring uh, Terry Crews doing what Terry Crews does best, hype up everything. Be Terry Crews. Yes. And he actually is in the game itself, so there's always that. Good. Um, I was still waiting for him to show up in Overwatch. <laughs> it's going to happen. He's going to be Doomfist. He better be Doomfist. Or at least something there. Um, there are a few more things we can talk about E3, um, and they're kind of on the, the weird side. One is uh, we want to talk about two things real quick. Assassin's Creed Origins, yes, they talked about this. You guys can read more about it online. But for this upcoming version of the game, there's the regular edition, there's the digital edition, there's the um, collector's edition, a couple other versions, and then there's the legendary collector's edition that is apparently available now for pre-order exclusively on the Ubisoft store. Um, there's only a 1,000 units uh, being made worldwide. And it includes like a, a 29 inch resin statue of uh, Bayek, the protector of Egypt, um, a certificate of authenticity, exclusive res re replica of Bayek's Eagle Skull amulet in resin, uh, two uh, exclusive Assassin's Creed Origin steelbooks, four large lithographs signed by Ubisoft Montreal studio artists, and a bunch of other in game uh, goodies. The other thing I want to talk about is from um, Thrustmaster. They make accessories, accessories for video games, specifically for racing games. And they uh, showcase what they're calling the TGT. This is their high-end racing wheel that will be available when Gran Turismo Sport, also announced at E3, hits later on this fall. Why am I bringing these two thing things up? They're $800 each. <laughs> Do I need to spend $800 on a video game accessory? Now, you brought this up before we recorded... There are hardcore fans who will have an entire setup just for Gran Turismo. Yeah, Gran like Turismo makes sense. Multiple window, uh, multiple monitors, uh, probably a racing chair. Um, yeah, they probably have a controller just like this already, but like this would be the one thing to, you know, kick it up a notch. Yeah, and to say you have this. I mean, this is, I mean, this is pretty high end stuff. Um, but yeah, full wheels and pedals for eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars for yeah, the Assassin's a statue, thing, no. a map, some lithographs, graphs that are signed, and uh, the game. Maybe hopefully, yeah, out of all that, considering how the other ones were just shit. No, I uh, I don't. They're coming off a streak of like what three bad games now? Yeah, because there was what there was three mm -hmm. that was terrible. Yes, four Black Flag. Here's the thing though, Syndicate. Black Flag was horrible when it was on land. When it was on the sea, it was a lot of fun. That was my least favorite. Really? Because they actually turned around and announced at, at E3 um, a new game, basically featuring all the seafaring parts of, of Black Flag. Okay, so there was Syndicate. <laughs> I feel like there was another one I'm missing. Wasn't there one exclusively on, like, on the PSP or something like that? Probably. Or PS Vita? Yeah. So that means there's at least four that I'm missing. $800, though. No. No. No, they can go fuck themselves. I mean, like, when that. I bought Legend of Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild, I bought, like, the middle pack that was, like, 100 bucks, And it came with a bunch of cool stuff. That yeah. I, you know, a case that I use every single day. It comes with the soundtrack, which I've uh, thoroughly enjoyed, and copy of the game itself. Um, the Legendary Master Edition, which was basically everything I had, plus a replica of the sword, a miniaturized version of it, for, like, 150 to $200. That wasn't worth it for me. Now to pay four times that? Yeah, no. no. No, fuck them. No, 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 no. At that point, I go buy an HTC Vive. Get into some VR stuff. Um, the final thing I need to bring up was a game that when uh, I read this announcement... Do you have to? I have to because this, this is a painful thing that I need to share. This is an actual game. When, this, when I first read the article, I thought, ha ha, this is funny. This is someone's idea of a joke. But then more people started talking about it, and more websites had re re reviews of it, and I watched more people have um, videos of it, and then I looked online, you can actually download this game right now. I'm talking about Garfield Go. <laughs> 
This is the brand new augmented reality treasure hunt game. Um, if you like Pokemon Go, Munzee, any of those GPS-based games, this is exactly the same thing. You have Garfield walking around in your uh, real environment, and you're collecting coins instead of Pokemon, and you use those coins to actually not only uh, unlock Garfield comics, but you can buy outfits for Garfield to wear, like a nice hat. You can buy him a white fedora if you wanted to. You can buy him lasagna. And then you can also use these coins to buy points to actually buy real-world items like gift cards to Starbucks and uh, Domino's Pizza and See, stuff See, that like I that. think is cool. Like, you can get free shit. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I was surprised. I thought this was just a joke. But you can go to, you know, to iTunes and you can go to uh, Google Play and download this game for your phone. <laughs> Why you would do Not that, I have no idea. All. It's just, no. Like, it even uses the whole AR feature that you would have in, in, in Pokemon that you turned off after, you know, using it once um, to play hide-and-seek with Garfield. Why? Why? This is an honest-to-goodness game that someone thought it was a good idea to spend time, money, and resources to make. What the hell is wrong with you? It's just middle-aged old people who just want free shit. Ah. <sighs> So, yeah. If any of you actually are brave enough to download this game, and even more so, play this... Don't tell us about it. Because we'll ridicule you. I don't you. care. <laughs> I, you could write, you know, two sentences, and I'll fall asleep two words in. <laughs> yes. All right, guys. That's going to be it for uh, this uh, episode of uh, Geeks and Drinks. We didn't get through anywhere near the amount of stuff we wanted to talk about, but honestly, there's just too much stuff that happened this, uh, this past week, so... And we were gone for a while, so we will try not to do that again. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you for watching. We'll have another episode very soon. Yeah. So for Geeks and Drinks, I'm Jason. I'm Jordan. Cheers, Internet. Cheers.